Beyond. 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 Hey, everybody. Welcome to Podcast Beyond, episode 468. Oh, boy. So for those of you who are just listening to our voices uh, from throughout the ether of the computer headphones, um, we probably sound maybe the same, maybe a little bit different. We probably sound for, a little bit better. Yeah. For those of you watching I sound great. on video, <laughs> you'll note that we are in a beautiful new studio, and we've got cool new microphones that don't have those weird foam things on them that smell like man fart. And... Uh, <laughs> Those were really smelly you know uh, microphones. Yeah, it shows. also smelled like lady farts, so be, be fair. Okay, so <laughs> it, the, the good, like, just, you know, unisex fart of the microphone shields is gone. We now have these cool um, silver things. We don't deserve nice... whatever they gave us. Hey, basically. look at that. I got my own camera. Go back to me. Stop, stop. Do it. Stop yeah, it. what's stop up? It. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, so a lot of stuff's going on. Uh, it's that wonderful, fun time of year when things come out and games come out and people review them. We get to talk about them. But we also got a brand new sort of PlayStation. No, definitely got a new PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, this is brand new PlayStation hardware. The, the PlayStation 4 Pro, 4 Pro yeah. is out in the wild. Raise yep. your hand if you have one. Oh. For the record, uh, Caleb and Brian <laughs> both raised their hands. Right. Again, if you're not watching the video of this, you're missing out. Yeah, you should be. Um, Max and I uh, remained uh, handless because yeah. we're just a couple poor boys. I was touching my lap. Uh, anyway, what's uh, what's the PS4 Pro like? So right off the bat, I want to say real quick, it's I think it's just been like truly amazing as a PlayStation fan to get not one but two new hardware launches within the matter of a few months. I got a PSVR and a PS4 Pro within four weeks of each other. I don't know what we did to deserve this as PlayStation fans. Yeah, it's Usually sort of you have to wait every five yeah. years, you know? Yeah. It's a bit overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's a lot overwhelming with good things. Yeah. It is, uh, and they don't necessarily communicate as best as they possibly could. But we'll get into some of that. But uh, Caleb, you got a PS4 Pro. I just yes. got one. Uh, we've had now about four or five days with the new system. Yeah. What was what was the whole sort of experience like for you? Starting with sort of just bringing it home, unpacking it, and doing your first system transfer. Well, so I got a bit of a head start. I brought my my hard drive and my old PS4 to the office on Thursday. So as soon as Amazon dropped off my PS4 Pro, I was ready to do the transfer. You were doing some surgeries on it. Yeah, I actually, yeah. I actually transferred my two terabyte hard drive from my PS4 to the PS4 Pro first. So you already voided the warranty. Uh, <laughs> just completely destroyed. No, they they allow no, you they to will do send that. People they they like you they for swapping out hard drives. Yeah. They even make it easy for you. Um, so the hard drive swap process is basically the same as it was with the PS4. So I did that. You have to download the firmware and put it in a little thumb drive and reinitialize the system so it views your new hard drive as a new hard drive. Yep. And then I backed up my PS4 using the backup and restore function, restored it to my PS4 Pro. And Most importantly, I saw you still have PT. Absolutely. Unlike yeah. Me. PT is safe in its new home. I like that you can just sort of carry that from system to system for as long as you possibly can. Yeah, because the backup and restore function, right, that's what it does. Is it's yeah. basically making a full image of whatever your PS4 is. So if your PS4 gets stolen or if you drop it in a pool of water. Mm -hmm. Or if or, Konami takes your games off the store and you cannot I'm, download them or anymore. you bring a girl home and she steps on your PS4 that, and you no yeah. longer have PT. Yeah, what happened that's with that? Just, that was just a real big mistake, guys. You're a mess. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, the, so the transfer worked the same as a regular PS4. Um, it was great, and I'm all set and good to go. Um, so by the time I got home on Thursday, I was all ready to play Dishonored. Awesome. I've, so I've noticed there's actually been a couple different ways of actually doing that sort of system yeah. transfer. Um, one of them that you can do is just sort of start from fresh, log in your account, and then get, if you have PlayStation Plus, uh, download your cloud saves, assuming you uploaded those. Yeah. So then you'll have to re-download all of your games, which uh, if you have a lot, is kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. The way I did it was a little weirder. I took an ethernet cable and connected my old uh, PS4 yeah. to my new PS4 Pro, Ooh. And connected them, and then so I basically had two PS4s hooked up at the same exact time. Only one of them had to be connected to the TV, uh, making sure both of them were on the same sort of uh, firmware. And then I had, I think, 380 gigabytes, because I had a launch wow. PS4, which I think was 500 gigs. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, basically managing it where to the point where I get rid of stuff where I don't need it anymore. I know a lot of people are more like digital hoarders with stuff like that. I try to be a little more, you know. That's me. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> two terabyte drive. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, I stuck with the one terabyte drive that comes with the Pro right off the bat. And the reason I got one to begin with was because I was sort of like, all right, well, I, my launch PS4 has been kicking around for a while. I want to upgrade the hard drive. Um, if I trade this one in, I can get a couple hundred bucks off the new one and then putting in a new hard drive, uh, it basically came out to be like two hundred bucks to upgrade. And to me, it feels like the like it it feels like the leap between like going from uh, a phone one year to a phone the next year. Kind well, especially of, you know? the amount. You, I mean, you're using it right now for PSVR pretty much, yes. right? Whereas you have a four, wait. Do you guys have four K TVs? No, I just ordered one, so I'll okay. have I'll have this, the same one we have in the office here. And I, yes, I just bought one. Yeah. Okay. So I did a system transfer. It was three hundred eighty gigabytes, and it took about. 
I want to say about 85 minutes, which is kind of nothing at all. Considering like, I remember when I did a system transfer from my 3DS to my new 3DS, I don't know if any of you guys have ever done that oh, yeah. before. It was a nightmare. I have both plugged in uh, to their own uh, power adapters at the same time, and I think it took 23 hours yeah. and timed out like three times. And you see, and I killed literal, your Animal Crossing town. Yeah, my Animal Crossing town died <laughs> in the meantime. And so what it was this, a couple gigs. Yeah, this that. this carried everything over. The only thing that happened was I got logged out of Hulu and Netflix. Okay, <laughs> and it was so like, it's, it's sort of like the end of Avatar <laughs> when they plug into that big tree and there's yeah. Like yeah. The cords between them. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, except, except I, you remember your passwords. Yeah, yeah, and I wasn't trying to forget it for the, every day for the last. There six you go. Uh, so yeah, you've talked a lot about PSVR. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing I don't think we really touched on a whole lot in our like PS4 Pro review. What's yeah. your What's your take on that? Like, how does it How does it interact with that? Is it They didn't. I mean, Sony hasn't even really touched on it, but clearly it's going to so, improve uh, stuff. It's kind of a gift and a curse to use PSVR with the PS4 Pro because um, first of all, just general sort of like operating system stuff. It feels snappier. Downloads are quicker. Uh, I think it's using a better Wi-Fi signal, which the Slim is also using as well. Um, and you're getting some better sort of video output functionality, even on a 1080p TV. Um, PSVR, on the other hand, uh, is sort of night and day with some games. I played some, I tested out Drive Club, uh, Robinson the Journey, um, Bound, some of the more like sort of graphically intense games. Um, And the ones that got a patch are noticeably better. Like even I tried the London Heist level um, in PlayStation Worlds, and you can actually like I, I didn't. I don't think I really realized like how much of like a 32x game that game looked like the first time around. Like the actual uh, the inside, the interior of the guy's car, and that shootout sequence is very flat. And now it's like textured and a lot more nice yeah. looking. Um, Robinson was one of the games where I was like, wow, this is noticeably better. One of the things I noticed for sure, white text, text in general in PSVR has been kind of like hit or miss. Yeah, if you guys noticed that, it's got yeah. a lot of I mean, like, it almost has like a, a, yeah, it. and it has or like a blur around. The yeah, edge. it's yeah. got it a blur. There's some aliasing. You have to do stuff where you like you're basically tilting the back of your hat up uh, to angle it a little bit so you Hats see things to better. You. Yeah. So uh, that I notice is actually much more crisp. Uh, load times in general feel better. So if you're only buying a PS4 Pro for PSVR, think about it's like $400 for the PSVR, $400 for the Pro. You're getting in a sort of like Oculus territory there in terms of pricing. But I think graphics wise, obviously not as great as Oculus, but it's getting close. Yeah, like it's it, closing the gap between yeah. them. And there's one major issue of hooking up your PS4 Pro to your yes. PSVR which you haven't encountered yet, Yes. which you will when you get your 4K TV. So 4K TV is the one you want to look for now, the one I just bought and you bought, just bought is a Samsung KS8000, I believe. Yeah, right? the KS8000, which, which the reason we bought that is because it's su- supposed to be pretty good for HDR yeah. as and, well as really low input time. Yeah, for very low latency, which uh, you might have seen this deal kicking around from Sony the other day. It was $1,000 for a PS4 Pro and a, and a 8, 4K TV. Uh, that one's got pretty crappy latency, so just be careful yeah. with that kind of stuff. But so the issue with PS4 with uh, PSVR and PS4 yeah. Pro is that the PSVR will pass through the 4K signal to your 4K TV but it won't pass through HDR. Yeah, so it's very finicky, and now people are figuring out a way to sort of like set up, like you can buy like a Switch through Amazon that'll, it's like 15 bucks, and you can do a pass-through on it. But regardless, I think it's incredible, like it's kind of a huge misstep for Sony to announce and launch both of these pieces of hardware that work together so well in some ways, but in this very glaring, very obvious thing, uh, completely sort of conflict with each other. And I don't know how that happened. And then even though those Sony's TVs did have kind of much worse latency issues yeah. than some of the other TVs in the model. They uh, in out there right now. They did just release a firmware update for a lot of their 4K TVs, which reduced that. Yeah, which is still something I need to get used to is TV is needing firmware. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things. Is this one of those things they can like fix in post, or is it like if you buy a TV, you're kind of screwed? I think um, it's a little bit of both. It's a little okay. bit of both. I think possibly the former, but my guess is that within the next six months, you'll see Sony selling a breakout box that functions in the way their launch version of PSVR didn't. And while we're all waiting for like PSVR version two and three and the next gen versions of those things, I think we're going to get a box. They'll probably sell it for like 40 or 50 bucks. You'll swap out your old one, sell it to some schmuck. Sorry. And then, <laughs> sorry to schmucks. And then you'll put the new one in and everything will work as, as uh, directed. Yeah. But um, one of the things that I will point out, PSVR takes up a uh, USB slot. 
on the front of your PS4 right now. So and many since, cables. Yeah, so many cables. <laughs> but since the PS4 Pro actually has a USB slot on the back, it frees up the two in the front. So you don't have this stupid Dr. Octopus snake coming out of the front of your system, which as you've, if you've tried it, PSVR... It can't be an octopus and a snake. Dr. Octopus snake? What's wrong with you? You know, it's a bunch of animals just all put together. Who so cares? Just a say a rat's nest. nest. It's, it's fine. It's a rat's a nest. Ball uh, a ball of snakes. <laughs> a ball of rats. Um... <laughs> So you can actually plug it into the back now, which if you've used PSVR before or, or tried it or seen it anywhere, you've seen all the cables coming out of it. So this reduces that just by the tiniest bit. Um, also, because when you use PSVR, you use Move controllers, which use their own uh, separate proprietary or uh, not proprietary, those cool ones from 2012. The mini USB chargers. I sold school. Uh, so now you can actually cables. you can charge two things at the same time. If you use your Sony headset, which has that little Bluetooth plug-in thing, like there's a lot going on. So uh, now you have better abilities to sort of manage that. Has Sony like announced a proprietary entertainment console yet? Like just a box you can put all this crap in and close the doors just on it. Just a big cardboard box. Yeah. I mean, no, that'd be great though. Well, I mean, I mean what they suggest is you just turn the lights off. And you can yeah. see it. can they so yeah, put it on your floor and have a woman step on it? Yeah. That worked yeah. for Marty. Yeah. You know what? What? You want Yeah, that was a big mistake on my part. <laughs> But well, I'm glad you've, been, you've come to terms with that, Marty. You've been playing PS4 Pro like in the proper way, yes. in 4K, yes. with HDR, with yes. all the new game patches, which I think it was something like 25 or 30 games got patched yeah, this big week. List. Yeah. Bunch of classic games like The Last of Us, Uncharted 4, not infamous. the Uncharted Collection, Infamous, and uh, the Infamous DLC. Um, Kanak is getting one. I mean, Titanfall yeah, 2. Yeah, Nat got one. Yeah, Titanfall yeah. 2. And then, yeah, then modern games. VR games. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, a ton yeah. of stuff got patched. How, how big are these patches? Uh, anywhere from a couple hundred megs to several gigs. Okay. Um, I think I want to say that the Last of Us patch was like six gigs or something. But wow. I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember. One, one, of the several, weird, several gigs. one of the weird things is a lot of these are sort of nebulous on what they do. Is that right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, hey, yeah. it's a better performance. And you're like, well, what does that well, mean? So that's what I wanted to get into, right? I, I, I think first off, I want to clear up a couple of rumors or mistruths about the PS4 Pro. The first is, is that it can't support native 4K. That's absolutely false. It supports native 4K with multiple games. Um, many games, they are, you know, too robust to render at a full 2160p or whatever the 4K resolution mm -hmm. is. But games like Skyrim, games like Thumper, games like Neo, which is coming out in the spring, uh, there's a bunch of games that are native 4K, mm -hmm. full 4K resolution. I believe Horizon as well, right? Uh, no, Horizon, I think, is checkerboarded. Oh, really? Which is, yeah, the... Um, I think. I don't, I don't think it's native. Because that's, that's easily like one I of the most check. gorgeous things I've ever seen. But anyway, seen. regardless, they, there definitely are full, mm -hmm. true 4K games on the PS4 Pro. The second thing I want to clear up is that people are saying there's no benefit to a PS4 Pro if you have a 1080p TV. Mm -hmm. And that's totally false as well, yep. because plenty of games are actually offering additional graphics modes for 1080p, mm -hmm. whether that's high frame rate, so like 60 frames per second, whether that's additional graphical bells and whistles, or whether that's super sampling, where the game is actually rendered at 4K, and then basically that 4K image is brought down to 1080p for your TV, so it you know gets rid of jaggies. It's like, it's like like it's a it's a way of anti-aliasing basically yeah. yeah and if this is confusing to you and you wanted pc games to come to consoles <laughs> they have and here we are <laughs> Except that it's just one box that you yeah. plug in. Yeah, and that then still does like make it easier. But I did notice with games like Tomb Raider got patched, um, and they give you sort of like a number of different options yeah. in terms of what you want to prioritize uh, in terms of power. Yeah, I or think draw that's really distance. cool. Yeah, um, yeah, sort of having the choice to be like, hey, frame rate matters to me, or you know, yeah. running in 4K matters to me, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is cool. And so having options is yeah. fantastic, yeah. right? Um, on the flip side of that, what's sort of been bothering me are I don't expect all games to have options. But I would at least like to know what the pro is doing, doing. Yeah. on yeah. a game by game basis. Yeah. So like I played Dishonored 2 all weekend, right? And Dishonored 2 is PS4 Pro supported. What does the pro add? Right. I don't know. Yeah. It's better yeah. load I times mean, or something. Yeah. It looks really nice, yeah. but I haven't played on another TV yeah. on a vanilla PS4, so I yeah. don't know what the differences huh. are. So that's like I think there's two things that need to start happening going forward coming from Sony and PlayStation directly, is that one, uh, I think that Basically, if you're working on a, a PS4 game, it, it should be mandatory that there's a pro support or patch at some I capacity. Think, I think it is. Well, no, because some games are still sort of like hit or miss with that stuff. I noticed there's like two PSVR games that are coming out this week that aren't pro supported. Um, so I think in the next few weeks, you'll see uh, developers playing catch up. But number two, uh, like the game box or patch notes or somewhere should indicate everywhere this is what you're getting. That's one of the things Vince pointed out in our review yeah. was sort of like, you don't really know what you're getting. Like it says PS4 pro supported, but what does that actually mean? Yeah, you there's know? no regulations sort yeah. of across 
And I know that if we get too obsessed about resolution or frame rates, it gets kind of navel gazy. But at the same time, if you're marketing something for the pro pro gamer or for a you know more enlightened more technically based yep. gamer. Um, they just want to know those details. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's that's why we're dropping the extra 400 bucks. Yeah. And so, that's, that's one of the things that PC gaming gets well uh, d- done really well is that like it looks really boring to us, but when you see patch notes, I mean, even my phone does it when you update an app. Goes in the minutia. It, yeah. it tells you like, oh, we added this, we added this, we added this, performance, uh, the, the blah, 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 blah. So I think like, yeah, it seems boring, but like we're this is where we are now as console gamers, as PlayStation gamers. Like, let us know what's actually yeah, happening yeah. in these yeah. games. Uh, so Brian, you mentioned uh, load times being noticeably better with the yeah. PS4 Pro. That's one thing that really appeals to me. Obviously, load times suck. Mm-hmm. Uh, what really scares me, though, is if developers start focusing too much on the PS4 Pro and let their load times kind of slack on vanilla PS4. Yeah, and obviously that's been a concern since we first heard about the Pro, right, of sort of like splitting the market. Um, and again, we don't have a lot of examples of what this is like in the console space. That's why I brought up the, the new 3DS before. Yeah. So the last time we sort of saw this like, oh, this only works on the new 3DS and this doesn't work on the old one. And I mean, with if you look at the Xbox One S, it's not really s- splitting hairs like that. Well, so the Scorpio is going to. But the Scorpio yeah. will, yeah, and eventually you will have a point of no return. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I mean, what is yeah. the Scorpio? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my, just my thing is, uh, uh, Digital Foundry uh, yeah. put out a list that there are a handful of games that, as of this moment, actually don't perform as well on the PS4 Pro yeah. as they yeah. do on a traditional PS4, which, whether it be frame rate tri- uh, dips or anything yeah. like that. Which and is weird because, like, um, something like Deus yeah. Ex looks better than ever on the PS4 Pro, but it's got some hiccups in terms yeah. of. Well, and, the, and the reasoning behind that's interesting too, right? Yeah. You know, the games that are running worse on the Pro, I mean, ultimately, it's probably only a, like, five frames per second difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and, I'm, yeah. I'm, we've got the list right here, yeah. so I figured to go over it. Uh, we've got a few Square games. We've got Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Hitman, World of Final Fantasy. Those are all kind of, yeah. I mean, maybe they're running on similar guts or something. Uh, Mantis Burn Racing. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's an uh, STD. Skyrim Special Edition. Wow, Skyrim isn't playing well with a, with a Sony platform. That's yep. that's a big surprise. I'm sure that'll get fixed eventually. Yeah. Uh, and then, weirdly enough, The Last of Us Remastered. That seems kind of like a major oversight. But yeah. so yeah, I mean, take that all with a grain of salt, salt, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not like, like these are unplayable on a PS4. Right. Pro. And and look at for the reason why it's running slower than base hardware. Um, I think you know. Uh, What's a good example of that? Uh, the Last of Us is probably a good example. The reason why it's running slower than the base hardware is because the 1080p mode of The Last of Us is actually 4K super sampled. So if you're playing it on a 1080p TV, there is no way to say, just give me the old vanilla 1080p version right. of The Last of Us huh. Remastered. Yeah. The Pro is saying, actually, we're going to give you, if you click the 4K or the 30 FPS, so Last of Us does have some options. There's yeah. a high frame rate option. Mm-hmm. Anyway. If you pick the 4K option, it's going to super sample. If you pick the 60 frames per second option, it's just going to give you what that is anyway. And it does run a bit slower than the vanilla Pro version because the 60 frames per second version here has added graphical bells and whistles. Yep. Let me honest, Caleb. I'm really glad you're here because I don't understand. Oh, yeah, me too. So it's not a a light-for-light comparison, right? Yeah. Yeah. There there is no vanilla version of that game running on the Pro anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of things people are noticing are sort of like, frame rate hiccups, some stuttering here and there, and like minor screen tearing, but yep. nothing that's like completely killing sure. the experience. Yeah, absolutely. Like if, again, if you've been PC gaming for years, like this is the kind of stuff that like you've become accustomed to is like, man, I max this thing out, it looks better than ever, but like when I turn the guy in the Witcher too quick, like it it cuts the screen in half yeah. for yeah. half a second. And do you so. want more pixels? Do you want better performance? Yeah. How do you sort yeah. of mitigate yeah. the two? Yeah. So it's I mean, it's we're at a weird crossroads, right? Because I'd like the entire reason that people got into cro- uh, console gaming is ease of use and to not have to worry about any of this kind of stuff. It's sort of just the difference between cooking and ordering food, right? Yeah. You're just like, well, here it is, it's done. I don't care about how yeah. it was made. So uh, I think just like. It, it as a whole, like general impressions on the system, um, it does feel a little snappier. I do love the console design. The controller with the new front light bar is really sleek. Um, it just it's it's not a complete overhaul. Um, it doesn't feel like like. I don't have buyer's remorse for it, but I don't also have that like tremendous wow factor. The yeah. box is missing the handle, which oh, is that's a messed up. That's, that's a huge, huge problem. problem. That's garbage. They should. They can't fix huge that with problem. a patch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the wow factor was PSVR for you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's something that kind of enables that further. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And for yeah. me, it is really cool to walk by the someone playing Infamous or Mordor on a 4K TV on a Pro and be like, "Holy yeah. crap, this game looks good!" Like oh, these, these two almost three-year-old games like look phenomenal. Yeah. Games like First Light and Shadow of Mordor. I'm yeah. like. 
like uh, they look like games that just came out yeah. this week. Or flipping on high frame rate on Tomb yeah. Raider. I mean, Seriously, yeah. Tomb yeah. Raider running at sixty frames per second looks fantastic. Yeah. Which is like cool enough that like uh, we just got that entire game as like a PlayStation package deal with all the bells and whistles, and to have that stuff on top of it is just like yeah, yeah really, really awesome. Yeah. Cool. So PS4 Pro. Um, I mean, I'm sure we'll probably all line up with one at some point. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that'll be. Oh, I'll upgrade to it probably. In the next oh, year one thing so. I wanted to point out real quick. Um, it's not nearly as whisper quiet as I thought it would be. I've been playing Watch Dogs Two on it, and I know I don't think that's gotten a pro patch yet as of this moment. It probably will within the next 48 hours. But that system gets kind of loud. Like yeah, it's. Yeah, I mean, I haven't compared it to the Slim, which is supposed yeah. to be quiet. It doesn't seem much louder than my original launch PS4. Yeah. But the one thing that apparently is interesting about it is that it. It, it takes less power to run um, than a launch PS4. Weird. Uh, like, apparently, in, in like for like situations. Like, if you're running in 4K, obviously it's going to suck more power, but playing a game in 1080p that doesn't have a patch yep. apparently is more power efficient. It's which also, it's which also, for someone who played video games with solar power for a year yeah. is actually something <laughs> yeah, that I care about. Go read that feature you yeah. put on IGN, playing video games with solar power. No, yeah, no. this is the first PlayStation console where they actually changed the um, the power cable on the back. Like, it doesn't oh, have that yeah. thin flat one. It's yep. got that fat one that goes in. Yeah, so... Oh, weird cable shame. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry to the fat cables out there. <laughs> it's more robust. <laughs> oh, A nice sauce. 